Hi everyone, marhaba and welcome to the Arabic music series. My name is Laith Sadiq and this is a series of five videos in collaboration with Casa Arabe to provide you all with important elements of Arabic music from the perspective of well-known songs. Today's video is going to be about the Lebanese song Nassam Alin Al Hawa. Nassam Alin Al Hawa was composed by the Rahbani brothers in 1968 and was performed by Fairuz in the movie Bint Al Haris. The song gathered great popularity and was performed all throughout the Arab world. And here's the main part of the song, sung by Fairuz herself. Let's listen. Asi and Mansour al-Rahbani, also known as the Rahbani brothers, were accomplished Lebanese composers, songwriters, playwrights, and authors. The brothers were born in the town of Rahbi, in the north of Lebanon, hence the name Rahbani. And even though they were not involved in music from an early age, they would often help their local priest in creating vocal arrangements for their Antiochian Orthodox liturgies. But their musical career officially began when Asi al-Rahbani got a job at the Near East radio channel. And in 1951, the brothers met Fairuz, who was a member of the channel's choir. And impressed by her voice and presence, Asir Rahbani composed her very first song called Itab, which translates to reproach. Let's listen. <laughs> Following the song's success, the trio went on to become one of the most prominent groups in the Lebanese musical scene and released more than 50 songs in the following three years. Their first official performance was at the prestigious Baalbek International Musical Festival in 1957 under the patronage of then Lebanese President Camille Shamoun. This was the very first time a local Lebanese band appeared in the festival. Fairuz was born as Nuhad Wadi Haddad in 1934 and is considered one of the leading voices in the history of Arabic music. She's a cultural icon, and her voice was playing on almost all radios in the Arab world. I remember clearly our morning rides to school and how her songs were always accompanying us. Fast forward six decades, and she's recorded almost 1,500 songs and released more than 80 albums, working mostly with the Rahbani brothers, as well as with some of the most important artists and composers in the Arab world. She also headlined at important venues worldwide, like the Albert Hall in London and the United Nations General Assembly lobby in New York. To many, she is the sound of childhood, and to future generations, she will be the voice of the golden era of Arabic music. Nassam Alin Al Hawa is based on Maqam Kurd, which is one of the main Maqam families in Arabic music. Kurd is made up of two ajnas or building blocks, the first being agents of Kurd, starting on the root and the second jins of Nahawand, starting on the fourth degree. Kurd also looks very similar on paper to Maqam Bayati, but without the microtone on the second degree, and they're also very different in terms of their approach and framework. Here's a one-minute violent taqasim on Maqam Kurd. Thank you. 
The iqa' or rhythmic cycle of this song is the maqsum, our four-beat rhythmic cycle that we also heard in the previous video when we learned about al-hilwadi by Sayyid Darwish. Here's the maqsum again with the numbers and arrows above me, giving us the dums and the taks. Dum tak tak dum tak dum tak tak dum tak dum tak tak dum tak dum tak tak dum tak. The lyrics for this song were also written by the Rahbani brothers and they carried national sentiments. The song was released at a time when many Arabs were immigrating from the east to the west. And the sea was always coupled with the theme of immigration and reminded people of the journey to and away from home. The most touching part of the song reads, Ya Hawa, Dakhlil Hawa, Khidni ala Bladi, which paints a picture of someone asking and pleading the wind for help to guide them back home. Nassam Alain al Hawa, as well as many of the other songs by the Rahbani brothers, feature beautiful Arabic melodies that make strong use of the maqam system, combined with elements of Western orchestration and harmony, which evidently helped push the sound of Arabic music in a new direction. Finally, the song also features the sound of the buzuk, which you can hear in the beginning of the track. The buzuk is a long neck fretted lute that is under the same family as the Greek buzuki and the Turkish saz and was an essential instrument in the Rahbani repertoire. Let's listen to a buzuk taqasim by the fantastic Lebanese artist, the late Muhammad Matar. <laughs> And that's it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so you can be notified about the next video in this series. And I'll see you all next time.